can get started. And just to say that the event itself is being recorded. So if you miss any part of it or you would like to recap on anything that has been discussed today, it'll be available on YouTube and we'll also be sending out a post event communication and which has the links and everything that has been discussed today. Um, today we are going to be joined by um, some of our alumni who are joining as panellists, as well as our host, Bearpab. Um, so before I begin, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Bearpab for agreeing to host our event today and hope you do all enjoy it. And Bearpab um, graduated from Newcastle University in 2010 with a Master's in Agriculture and Environmental Science. Bearpab is now a wonderful leader in business in India and um, he's a partner at Chico Tech which was India's first ISA certified arborist and um, so without further ado I would like to welcome um, Bear Pav to host the event and I shall hand it over to him. Thank you. Hey thank you. Thank you so much Rebecca for such a kind introduction and hello everyone. I can see a lot of participants coming in. Um, I'm Vaibhav, and I'll be your host for the evening. Uh, and before we begin, I'd like to quickly go through uh, some of the housekeeping uh, points with you. So like Rebecca mentioned, uh, uh, that this is a live panel discussion, and, and it, is, it is being recorded, and it, the recording shall be shared with you uh, after the event via YouTube uh, or email. Um, and in order to provide a best experience for all the attendees, uh, we have uh, muted and turn the videos off of all the attendees. So please can we request you all not to turn it on anytime during the discussion. Um, and also we'd like to encourage you to ask questions to our panel at the end of the uh, discussion. You can use the chat box, uh, which is there on the bottom of the screen uh, on your Zoom software, where you can see the chat logo coming up. And if you can just uh, use that chat function to put in your questions, please try to keep the questions brief and uh, very uh, uh, legible so that we understand what you're trying to ask. Or if you want to direct a question to a specific panelist, please put the name of the panelist as well along with your question. Uh, so let's do a quick trial of the chat function. If you can see me and hear me well, can you write yes in the chat box so that we know that we are on the same page here? Excellent, thank you. Thank you, Rashmi. Thank you, Rashmi. I hope everyone's here. Yes, excellent. Thank you, Ayush. Thank you, Sunita. Yes, awesome. Right, so uh, I like to uh, share a few things about me. Like Rebecca already mentioned, that I'm uh, I'm an ISA certified arborist in India. I'm the first ISA certified arborist. Uh, let me tell you what an arborist is. An arborist is someone who is an urban tree management expert, uh, and I have uh, uh, graduated from Newcastle University in 2010 in uh, agriculture and environmental science. And my dissertation was specifically on urban trees and the pollution attunement or the reduction of pollution using urban trees in, uh, in city areas. Um, and after I finished my graduation, uh, I managed to get a job uh, for a couple of years in India with an ecological consultancy firm, uh, where I did a lot of uh, various projects of tree inventory, biodiversity assessment, uh, green belt designing, landscape designing, and so on and so forth. Um, and I also managed to do a, a small, uh, a quick six month internship at an organic farm in the UK as well during that time. So it was a whole, uh, an all round holistic experience for my, uh, for my career, uh, towards the growth of my career. Uh, and after a few years, I decided to take up a freelance consulting uh, uh, opportunity for myself. And I started doing a lot of freelancing work in, in the field of horticulture, landscaping and tree management. And while I, I was doing all that stuff, uh, I was uh, getting a lot of uh, feeling that there's something missing in the industry that I'm working in. Uh, we, we did have a lot of landscape people, landscape architects, horticulturists, uh, some really, really talented people in the industry we have. But, but a lot of times uh, the trees, the urban trees were neglected, were being neglected or were not being managed as the way they should have been uh, in the urban areas. And mostly uh, the infrastructure projects which came up in India were first harming the trees of the urban areas. And this need to be addressed. There's a lot of gap between what was actually happening on the ground and what was actually expected uh, of the project. So in order to bridge that gap, I started reading up and I found that, you know, there's something called as arboriculture and we need arborists in India as well. 
So since 2014, I started taking up, um, uh, you know, self-studying about arboriculture. Then I traveled to the UK. I traveled to Singapore. I worked with a few other consultants uh, there with arboriculture consultants. I tried to learn the tips and tricks of what arboriculture is. And then formally two years back, I did my certification in arboriculture from the International Society of Arboriculture in the USA. And it turns out I was the only Indian to have that certification in India. Uh, so which was a really both a proud moment and also a bit of scary thing because no one's going to understand what I'm trying to do here. So, but thankfully in the past two, three years, uh, my career has been uh, really, really promising. And it, it has been really, uh, in terms of, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, it has been really, really profiting as well. And also in uh, it has been very helpful in getting the, the message out there to people on what I'm trying to achieve and what needs to be done. So arboriculture has started to take shape in India nowadays. And uh, I've been, uh, I'm, I'm trying to make an arboriculture as a very well-established industry in India and hoping to have more people like me in India where we can come together and make a very established uh, arboriculture industry so that we can help improve the trees and uh, make our cities more livable, more green and more livable cities for us here. So that's a little bit introduction about me, uh, but uh, we have four other panelists today for you guys. Uh, and they are all distinguished panelists in their own industry, in their own fields, and they've achieved a lot since they've graduated from the Newcastle University. Uh, the first panelist that we have today uh, is Mr. Nitin Shait. Um, Mr. Nitin Shait, uh, he is, uh, uh, he owns, he has a master's in business administration and he graduated from Newcastle in 2007. And, and he owns his fashion clothing business in India and is, is now starting his own business in Canada as well. So he's juggling between India and Canada. Uh, and his degree has come very useful in both of these ventures as he continues to work across these two countries. So while in Canada, he worked out of Toronto uh, and while in India, he works out of New Delhi. So without further ado, I'd love to uh, invite Nitin Seth here uh, on the panel to talk about his experience uh, uh, of uh, working in India and life after graduation from Newcastle. Nitin? Yeah, thanks a lot for uh, your sweet introduction, Rabov. And firstly, I would like to thank uh, everyone in Newcastle who has given me the opportunity to speak today. Be Jeremy, Rebecca, uh, Rabov, Viraj, and everyone else. In case I've missed a name, I do apologize. So thanks a lot for uh, having me here, first of all. It's lovely to see everyone standing together in unit, especially in the COVID times. It just, it's a great feeling to see so many faces uh, at the same time, I can't even tell. But coming back to my story, yes, uh, I was uh, one of the youngest uh, graduates uh, from Newcastle. I was known as the baby in the coast because I was uh, at the tender age of mid twenties without much work experience. And I think the Newcastle MBA was a huge, huge uh, career booster for me. Words probably aren't suffice to suggest that, um, because as I said, as the baby on the course, and for me to um, sit with and work with so many seniors and uh, working professionals around me uh, definitely boosted my confidence enormously. And uh, yeah, it helped me uh, get more clarity about my career, uh, the way the Newcastle faculty look after me was amazing uh, in terms of uh, the academic support I got, um, the after class support from the supervisors, mentors and peers was simply outstanding. And uh, once I graduated, I just uh, felt uh, I was uh, able to uh, stand on my own feet and take more risks than I would have thought before. So I would like to thank uh, Newcastle University uh, especially for giving me that kind of confidence, which is now, as you specified, landed me in good stead in my career. Um, I always had this fashion, this uh, family fashion business and specialized into manufacturing and exports of ladies and kids wear. Um, so after, after completing my graduation in Newcastle, I did get some work experience in uh, UK. I did work for Marks and Spencers for a bit just to get some fashion experience. I also worked uh, interestingly in finance too. Out of, out of somewhere because I just had the confidence to sell the product. So I did try my hand there, I like that. And then when I came back to India, uh, I worked in the same fashion business for a couple of years. And then uh, as the competition grew and the profits declined, I decided to diversify the business and I launched my own enterprise uh, specializing into import and distribution of food and beverage products. So 
currently we are working on that as well. Uh, and uh, I again would thank Newcastle for, uh, you know, helping me explore those opportunities and giving me the confidence to be more versatile than I ever thought I would be. Um, and then uh, when these uh, businesses took off, it also gave me the opportunity to travel a lot and I was able to establish some successful business contacts in Canada. That was, uh, I think, back in 2015. So from 2008 to uh, 2015, I've been in India working in these businesses. And once I got the opportunity to travel to Canada and the business flourished there, um, I decided to just take a leap of faith and uh, immigrate uh, to Canada. Uh, so currently, I am, yes, as you correctly said, juggling between the two countries. But at the same time, I'm enjoying the variety that life is giving me to <clears throat> travel around and work with different sets of people at different times. So can't ask for more. Um, and Canada, yes, I've uh, worked uh, in finance as a senior investment specialist with the uh, Royal Bank of Canada, Scotia Bank, to name a few. And I've also started my own career coaching business, uh, helping people with the interviews and uh, job search. So that's something uh, uh, which uh, I really enjoyed and uh, it wasn't planned, to be honest, but uh, given the uh, situation in the market and the demand for immigration and everything, and you know the way I've been successful in landing one job after another in Canada, uh, drove me to this idea of starting this uh, career consultancy business. And uh, so, yes, uh, I, I believe uh, there've been a lot of different uh, skills and qualities which have unearthed with time. And uh, again, uh, it all started with the MBA program from Newcastle and the support and the confidence that program gave me. Um, so my message uh, to everyone who's uh, just graduated or on the verge of graduating, <clears throat> I, would, I would like to say, tell them to keep their options open and you know just focus on their, uh, on their talents and skills and opportunities uh, will keep coming. So, there's no need to lose heart or, uh, you know, get bogged down because of COVID. I mean, every cloud has a silver lining and that's, that's something uh, what kept me going uh, throughout my life. Even if I talk about your current op scenario in India or Canada, a um, lot of sectors have been hearted by uh, Corona for sure, but it's also presented an opportunity to some uh, pharmaceutical uh, companies or uh, healthcare sector or uh, even some uh, IT companies coming up with some new products to help um, the healthcare companies. So there's uh, always a window of opportunity <coughs> which uh, is hiring behind. It's just a matter of us finding and finding it and unearthing it. And then, uh, you know, focusing on, on our process to get a foot in the door. I think that's the most important thing which I have believed in and that's been the reason for my success. I've always been more process driven, driven not just results driven. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a frog in the throat because I've not been well for the last few days. So do bear with me. Um, but yeah, I, I always believe uh, even in my MBA program and thereafter I've always been uh, more process driven and not just results driven because results can be misleading at times and it can um, hamper your confidence if you're just looking at the results. So it's important to stay focused on your processes, um, have a clear vision of uh, what you aspire to be, what you aspire to achieve. And uh, and same times be a, little bit, be a little bit flexible in your career and your life because life sometimes presents you different opportunities which your mind might not be open to but might be the best uh, bet for you in the future. So yeah, it's important to have an open mind um, but same time uh, have a good uh, solid vision of where you want to be. So yeah, uh, that's uh, been my story. India, Canada, England. I have uh, pretty much been there, done that freshly. So uh, pretty thankful to Almighty as well as the university here for giving me uh, an opportunity to speak and share my experiences. And I know I speak uh, for everyone here when I say the best is yet, yet to come for all of us. So let's just stay focused and keep believing in ourselves. Thank you very much. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nitin. And uh, let me, I, I need to, in fact, we all need to send good wishes to Nitin because in spite of having bad health, he managed to show up 
and uh, that's something yeah, commendable yeah. and hats off to you Nitin. thank you so much can we all just write quickly awesome in the chat box and send lots of lots of love and good wishes to Nitin. <laughs> can we and can we write awesome in the chat box everyone that's that's all the love you're getting Nitin. hope you get well soon <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> excellent so uh, Nitin, you mentioned about you worked with mns was it a part time job in newcastle or was it how how was that how did you get into mns i mean finding the yes. job i mean um yes it was part time to begin with and uh, of course you can get the extra hours so practically it becomes full time eventually um i uh, ventured my way into the job market through uh, personal visits you could say like cold visits that's something i've been very successful with um that's oh. been my strength actually i've not uh being a stereotype applicant who would apply online and then wait for the people to respond and uh you know and then go from there i've so, always been someone who takes the bull by the horn so yeah so it, i think it's horses for courses so it's up to every individual to see where their strength is and um, but yeah for me like majority of my success be it england india or canada has been uh by cold visits and you know taking the bull by the horns and just showing you showing yourself up there so i think it was one of the uh, lecturers as uh, supervisors i had in newcastle who said your uh, success lies in your visibility so you know it's and it's ironic that i can't show myself right now because i've been well but uh, but yeah that's been the story of my life um yeah so i think uh, we all have our own strengths and weaknesses so it's just a matter of unearthing it and you know rediscovering ourselves as we go along this journey of life so yeah cold visits um i think these uh, social media is, is, a, is a huge huge platform as as we speak right now to advertise ourselves connect with people uh, through beat linkedin that's an, a, a huge huge professional tool depends on how we use it though um people can make some youtube videos as well um to other uh, job applicants something of uh, uh i've told my uh, <clears throat> um applicants or uh, my students in uh, in my businesses to you know uh, present a value proposition statement which is something uh, which shows how you can add value to an employer when you are uh, being interviewed it's it's a little uh, it just uh, adds a feather to your cap it also just uh, makes a difference uh, to the employer sitting across telling them that you've done your homework really well and you're really keen on joining them and um, yeah. so yeah these days it's uh, i think every employer especially in covid including me is looking for cost cutting so they are they want someone to come and hit the ground running they don't really want to invest training heavily in someone and then waiting for them to bring the business so if you can come out with a clear cut plan um a value proposition statement to speak where you you are clearly telling the employer these are my ideas these how are, this is the way i can add value to your business um and i think that would go down well that would definitely okay. add value to your uh, interview prospects as well as to the company's business so awesome. yeah those are a few little tips that which has uh, helped awesome. me um awesome. and yeah don't be afraid to express yourself be expressive be always uh, ready to think out of the box and surprise everyone i think uh, that is definitely which goes down well with most employers excellent i think this is a common thread between all newcastle and and i that we are very yes. uh, expressive and we try to be more visible so excellent nitin so uh, some amazing golden nuggets that you have given to all our viewers here today that you need to plan plan your plan basically know what you want to do add value to your employers and have as much as visibility as possible so that's amazing so really great nitin uh, so thank you nitin and i'm going to invite So Viraj works as a chief marketing officer for Euro UV Raj group of companies and it operates three of the leading brands in the global PPE and material handling industry uh, that is Viraj Safety First Alpha Grip and Cargo Lift uh, in this role Viraj leads the company sales and marketing efforts with a team of professionals and this is something noteworthy that he is one of the 50 top most promising entrepreneurs of India of 2017 so kudos to you Viraj and he is also uh, top 40 under 40 most influential indians in 2019 uh, and this is something phenomenal and it's really really proud to have an uh, nikas alumni doing such phenomenal uh, job in his industry here in india 
Viraj is currently based in Kanpur in India, and I would love, it's my pleasure to invite Viraj. Uh, can we have Viraj on the panel, please? Uh, hi, Vedas. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, thank you so much for the lovely introduction. And uh, I think uh, I think the introduction was absolutely perfect. And uh, I think I'll just uh, not take long. I'll just uh, be very brief for all the uh, participants on the call, just to talk about uh, how I went to Newcastle because I'm. I think uh, you mentioned that I just did uh, my undergrad from there. So right now I'm just 25, and I'll just quickly brief about. Uh, three to four most important things what uh, I personally feel that uh, choosing Newcastle University over any other university in the UK or in the world uh, helped me uh, to achieve all these success. I think apart from the academic excellence, I think the most beautiful part about uh, Newcastle University or the city is the social life there. I think that's the best in the country. And uh, I had friends uh, who were like in Glasgow, Edinburgh, even London, but everyone just used to come down to Newcastle, I mean, just uh, not not only for the party life and all that stuff, but generally the people are so friendly there. Uh, you, you don't feel that you're like miles away from India. And I think that's the most important thing to consider while uh, uh, choosing Newcastle University. Uh, just to mention, my brother uh, got through LSC, but still he chose Newcastle just because of the life, the academic excellence and the overall all-round development that happens in the university and the city. I think uh, another thing just to brief about uh, how my three years went in Newcastle was, I think in the first year, uh, the most important thing that I would like to emphasize on for all the people who are coming to the university is if they can become the course rep. Because uh, not many people jump into that. And once you're the course rep, uh, you, I mean, that, that's the best way to socialize with everyone that's there on your course. You build contacts, you build a great network. I mean, networks like... Uh, I mean, last, last last year I went to Bahrain, so I didn't know that the Sheikh of Bahrain was my classmate. So that actually helps in uh, developing business later on. Uh, in the second year, in our course, we had an optional module that allowed you to start your own business in Newcastle. So you got your company registered there. I, I don't know if it's still registered or not, but definitely in that year, we started a business in which we sold uh, clubbing T-shirts in Newcastle. So we used to import uh, uh, I think uh, it was two quid or two and a half quid that it costed us. And we used to sell that uh, to the students in and around Newcastle just for the nightlife and had those funky coasts written on the t-shirts and everything. Uh, after that, I think I took a gap year uh, because it was a sandwich course. I went back to India and uh, because at that time my uh, parents were developing the business I'm in right now and worked with them for a year, tried to understand my business, how it operates and all that. And when I came back in the final year, I think uh, three out of five assignments I did on my own company, which actually helped me uh, uh, do everything in the last three years what I've done. So we, I mean, I, I got marked on my company's assignment because you have to choose a brand that you have to work on and that could be any brand that you choose. So it was eventually that I chose our brand and that uh, helped us uh, a lot in the last three years to grow our company because at that time as a student you uh, research you do a lot of things you uh, try to get to know what's going on in the market and it's it's just a piece of paper that you get marked on but eventually when you implement it in the practical field and if you've given good work onto that i think uh, then it uh, really uh, turns out to be fruitful while you're working in the practical office apart from that i think uh, in terms of uh, part-time jobs in the second year, we applied for uh, a brand ambassador position. So in UK, that's uh, very common that uh, uh, as, as a student, if you want to do part-time jobs uh, and if you don't want to work, uh, I mean, I'm not uh, downgrading anything, but if you don't want to work in uh, McDonald's or something like that, as Indians, you have way many better opportunities that you can be a brand ambassador for any brand. So basically, I was a brand ambassador for a company called All Year Books. Uh, it was based out of Cambridge. And you had to just uh, market that within your university and you got a commission on that. So that's actually very helpful when you apply for jobs on your CV. Uh, in the final year, I think I'm not remembering, I think it was through Indeed or something, but uh, uh, I, I took up a uh, job for, it was, a, it was a seven day thing, but we finished that in four days and we covered more than 350 offices. We were, had to go and give a demo of a particular uh, beverage that just came out in the market. 
So I think all these little things apart from academics is uh, what uh, Newcastle's most uh, and the biggest USP because you, 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 you're free there. You, you're living an independent life. Uh, I mean, I was, I was 17 when I went there, uh, didn't know what to do. And after like three to four years, when I came back, it was, I mean, I, I, I can completely say that I was a changed person. After coming back into the business, uh, I think uh, God's been kind or whatever you can say, but uh, in the last uh, three years, our company is into uh, PPE. And uh, before COVID, nobody knew what PPE was. Uh, thanks to COVID that everyone in the world now knows what PPE is. And in the last three years, uh, we've grown, uh, I think, at a rate of 500% in total. Uh, this year, uh, we are uh, the first Indian PPE manufacturer to be Forbes featured as well. So that was a big thing for us. And uh, I think uh, I think the most important thing, as I mentioned, is that if you guys are choosing Newcastle, it's 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 all about uh, uh, an all-round development rather than anything specific in particular. And special mention uh, to the Jordies there. Uh, so basically, Jordies are people who uh, are from the northeast England uh, and. Uh, they have a very uh, a strong accent, which uh, you might be, uh, which might be a little uh, hard to understand initially. But after that, uh, you speak with them. I think there's the, they are the most friendliest people in the world I've ever met. So I think that was my uh, little uh, brief about. Excellent, excellent. Thank okay. you. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Great, great. Uh, Viraj, uh, it was really great to have your insights. And uh, uh, so it, it's really exciting to know that you, your business grew more than 500% in, in the last two years. So how did you achieve that? So how, what qualities or what skills of your degree and your university knowledge helped you achieve that result? Can you just... I think basically, I think that there's three points. One is uh, communication, second is networking, and third is uh, the... Uh, overall development that you have. I mean, the independence, uh, I mean, you, you come out stronger when you come out uh, staying uh, from a different country after three years. I mean, I had my, I, I studied in a boarding school before that, but uh, eventually uh, you, you still can find in a boarding school because it's a school you, you, you saved there. But in Newcastle, I mean, it was something that you were like miles away from everyone in the family. You didn't know anyone there. Yeah. Uh, how make friends, how to make contacts, as I mentioned about this bar and shake or better, I mean, uh, the most best builders in the country right now, uh, three of them were my classmates. So manufacturing PP, that's, that, that's, that's used in the construction industry. So because you make contacts there, you can just go to your friend and say that, look, I'm manufacturing this. Would you like to try the product? And if the pricing and the product is all right, then you, your business just grows. So I think networking, definitely number one uh, uh, that uh, I learned from Newcastle. I mean, you read the quotes and all out there on the internet, on social media, but uh, I actually, you, you learn how to practically do that when you're there amongst uh, millions of people in the city whom you don't know. And the most important thing also I feel is that uh, I think the global demographic, I think Newcastle as a place is, uh, I mean, is like in our university, we had people from all over the place. Yeah. And I, I think I think you might not be aware. I think Rebecca might know that. I think Arco is the big, biggest PP chain in the UK. So it's a brand called Arco. And the top most sales manager's daughter was in our management course. So in the second year, I found that out. And in the third year, when I came back, I approached her and her father, her father just made me meet different people in the company. And then we got that business also. So, I mean, I, in, in general, because I'm from a marketing and management background, I can talk about marketing only. Uh, it's all about, it's all about building your networking skills and just going out, talking to people and sharing your knowledge. That's it. Excellent. Excellent, Viraj. Uh, amazing. Some amazing golden nuggets we have again from Viraj here today. And I hope all the viewers here are, are, are enjoying the conversation that we are having here. Uh, if you can, if you're enjoying, uh, write yes in the chat box so that we know that you're still around with us and you're, you're, you're in tune in sync with what's going on here today. So you can write yes in the chat box. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Neeti. Thank you, Rebecca. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Uh, excellent, Viraj. Thank you so much uh, for your valuable time here. Uh, and I'm going to move on to the next panelist now, uh, which is uh, Achint. Uh, bear with me for a moment.
Right. So we have Achint Soni, uh, the regional officer for Newcastle University. I hope Achint has logged in here already. I believe. Yeah, yes, okay. I have him. I'm right here. How yes. Are you? Awesome. Awesome. Uh, he is a Hello, regional everyone. officer for Newcastle University. He's based in India at the moment, and he has recently studied uh, renewable energy, masters in renewable energy. Uh, at Newcastle in the year 2014. So he's one of the recent graduates and I'm sure he would have a lot of latest things and tips and tricks to share with all of you. So over to you, Achint. Hi, thanks a lot, Vep. Uh, it was excellent to hear everyone. Uh, some really, really great insights there and uh, congratulations to uh, you know the speakers before me uh, talking about their achievements. Some of them being incredible. Uh, being, for example, uh, Viraj being focused, uh, sorry, uh, showcased in uh, Forbes is quite a great achievement. Congratulations on that, Viraj. Um, just um, in terms of a bit about myself, uh, sorry, this computer is a little shaky. Um, so I graduated with a bachelor's in uh, mechanical engineering in 2013 uh, from Newcastle, and I immediately decided to do a master's there because uh, I was highly in love with the city. Um, I've spent about roughly a little less than seven years in Newcastle. Uh, so I did my... <clears throat> my undergrad, my postgrad, and then I did work for a bit. Um, I was also um, a graduate entrepreneur, so I did get that visa uh, to set up a startup of, of my own in, um, in Newcastle. Um, that was based, it was quite technical, it was based around uh, vending machines and the engineering behind it. Um, I ran that for a little less than two years, and of course, uh, because of visa restrictions and uh, the lack of funding, uh, we had to shut that. <laughs> Um, but I guess that's uh, the experience I got out of that was quite incredible. Uh, after, you know, moving back to India, um, I've worked as a freelance uh, marketing consultant. I've uh, got a firm with a friend of mine who studied with me in Newcastle and we're based out of Delhi and of Singapore. Um, and while I was doing that for a couple of years, uh, the opportunity to work for Newcastle presented itself. Um, and I couldn't say no because it's, a, you know, it's, it's a city that's very close to my heart. And of course, the university itself is, uh, you know, has been a life-changing experience for me. Um, the, what, you know, based on what a lot of people have said, I don't think I could add, uh, you know, a lot more to um, what the key points of being at a university like Newcastle uh, are. Uh, something Viraj and uh, Nitin both said, networking is, I think, probably uh, one of the most key areas um, while you're a student or, you know, throughout your life, of course. Uh, especially if you're looking to run your own uh, business once you're done. Um, but even while at university, there are so many opportunities. We've got a uh, such a you know multicultural cohort uh, of students from around the world um, at the campus, um, and that kind of adds into the kind of experience you take. So this is one of the one of the key examples I usually give is when I was studying engineering. Um, as as an Indian student, uh, some of the, some of the things that come naturally to us when we're looking at problem solving is uh, the key concept of Jugaad. Uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's something we make a lot of fun of, but if it's, I think it's, it's a brilliant concept in its, uh, in its essence because it um, kind of helps you look at a problem with uh, the limited resources that you have and how we can tackle that problem with that. Um, and that's usually how a lot of Indians respond to a problem. Uh, and you can see that obviously uh, it's far more evident when you're looking at uh, it from an engineering standpoint. Um, but when I was doing that course, I could see students from different parts of the world. So we had uh, students from South America or, uh, or a German student who, who looked at the same problem very differently. And I think um, the perspective that that gives you when you're doing group work um, in terms of looking at how people approach the same problem from different parts of the world based on the cultures they come from is, I think, very rewarding and also uh, very, very beneficial when you move on uh, to whatever you do in your careers after uh, university in terms of being able to get that ability to look at problems from how different cultures and different parts of the world would look at the same issue. Um, and it kind of helps you, uh, you know, improve your problem solving skills. Uh, but in terms of networking, I think uh, the, the societies and the extracurriculars that are available in Newcastle, um, I gained a lot of my network at, uh, you know, at, at being a part of the Entrepreneur Society uh, or what was called Rise Up at that time and now Startup. Um, it really, really helped me. I thanks to that <clears throat> I run a business um, that kind of works in separate countries now, uh, based on the network I made, um, just like what uh, Viraj and Nitin were mentioning. Um, and I think that's <clears throat> one of the key key points uh, of looking at um, you know post um, 
your education at, at, at Newcastle, uh, what you'd be looking to do. Uh, of course, we've got the career service and that provides some uh, really, really great support. Um, but yes, um, and of course, we're now based in India also. Uh, so you can always come to us and we can get you in touch with anybody you need to be um, at the university. Uh, but yeah, that was my two cents uh, on that. I think, uh, I also think in, apart from networking, if you're looking at coming back to India and working here, um, I would say, um, you know, put yourself out there, uh, be part of conferences and, you know, workshops and look at a lot of startups that are coming up across the country. They're really looking uh, for talent from all around the world. Um, and they're in desperate need of talent from all around the world. Uh, so they've been quite approach and they're quite approachable that you could get through, you know, get to them through social media. Uh, a lot of them advertise around there. Uh, there's a lot of really good groups around, um, the country that kind of, uh, social media groups that kind of post, uh, job applications and job ad, uh, adverts around, uh, the country. But apart from that, I think one of the key, uh, key places on the internet where you can look for jobs is LinkedIn. Uh, just make sure you've got a really, really great profile and uh, you'll be surprised at the kind of uh, people that turn up and ask about, you know, what you're currently doing and what you'd like um, to do. And that could turn into an offer for a job, uh, not that, you know, uh, quite soon. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, kind of the two, uh, two or three main things that I uh, thought I'd mention as part of uh, this. Uh, session. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for having me. And Brilliant. thank you, thank you, Achin. So some amazing uh, pointers out there uh, from a young graduate, uh, Achin. <laughs> so thank you. So well, much I would, for... uh, thank you so much for calling me young. But yes, <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So so like Achin mentioned that, and also uh, Nitin mentioned in his talk as well. And I think everyone also uh, you know agrees with this that the visibility is really, really important. If you're really good at something, you just can't be sitting in, 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 your, in your boundaries. You need to go out, meet people, network, and, uh, and get other people to know that what you are up to. Uh, it could be via social media or for conferences or from other networking events or whatever it might be. So Achint, what was your uh, plan of action uh, in terms of gaining visibility for your kind of work? Uh, so for a, a quite quite similar to the previous speaker, so I was a course rep for probably four out of my five years at university. Uh, oh. I got elected as the postgraduate officer in the students' union. Uh, so that kind of uh, you know put me in the forefront. I got to meet people, uh, you know, try and have a lot of exchanges. I was in part of a few societies, including the debating society, the entrepreneurial society, and then of course uh, I had this business idea. So a friend of mine and I uh, pitched that to uh, the career service. You know, rise up. Uh, the startup support within uh, the career service and that kind of eventually led us uh, to get a graduate entrepreneur visa um, where we worked on our business for about a year and a half um, and I think that's um, yeah that was probably the, the the key way of getting in and about but of course depending on the kind of things um, you'd like to do uh, even within Newcastle the number of jobs that I got working part-time were all through you know the network that I had built uh, where there was uh, working as a bartender or working for a, um, a startup based in uh, Campus North, which is sort of an incubator uh, in Newcastle. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it, I think that's, that's the key thing. Uh, even if you are an introvert, uh, to be able to get a job, you will need to go out and meet people. And I think that's very, very key. So you're going to have to, uh, you know, pull your socks up a little bit awesome. and try and yeah. get that sort of <laughs> Pull your socks up, even though you're an introvert, you need to go out there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Point taken, sir. Uh, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> so great, great, Achin. Thank you so much for no sharing problem. your insights. And uh, uh, please do hang around. We'll have some sure. more questions coming across to all the panelists as well. Uh, all the viewers, the participants here, if you still have any questions, please use the chat box to put in your question and answers for the panelists and we'll take it up uh, after the discussion session is over, uh, which is Ms. Neeti Shah uh, and she has done her master's in mechatronics uh, it, and she's graduated from Newcastle in 2015 and she is a cloud developer at the moment and working with IBM in Bangalore. Um, this is all Greek and Latin to me, honestly speaking. She has done so much of work and so much of technical uh, uh, things in her industry. She has, she's got more than five years experience in various fields like automation testing, mechatronics design, image processing, and sensor fusion algorithm. I'm sure this is very, very important and very uh, impressive, but I hope, Neeti, you would be able to throw some light on what you do 
and make it a little bit simple for us to understand what your career has been since you graduated from Newcastle. And I'm glad to hear uh, Nipin, Viraj and Anjit. It was amazing to know about your career journey. Thank you, Rebecca, Newcastle University, Web of. Uh, I hope I'm not missing out anyone for bestowing this honor upon me. So uh, I have de decided to divide my speech into three parts. Part one will be my story so far. Part two will be the lessons that I have learned from my personal experience, uh, some hard learned lessons. Uh, part three is some practical guides to build your career uh, in the current century. And uh, there's a little bonus at the end for people who are wishing to build their career in the IT sector. So uh, I did my bachelor's from uh, Mumbai University, KJ Somaya, in electronics and telecommunication. And I was very much interested in designing car, making car intelligent and custom made. Uh, that attracted me to come to Newcastle and uh, pursue mechatronics engineering. And uh, by far, that was the best decision I have made. Uh, the professors that I met were amazing. They had practical knowledge on the state of the art. Uh, okay, I'm getting a request to start my video. Okay. Um, sorry, is this is this better? Yeah. So uh, it was sta state of the art technology that they learned. I distinctly remember one professor who was telling us about uh, how he used to buy trains. Uh, 12 or 14 or 14 number of trains. The way we buy oranges in dozens, that is how we used to buy trains. Uh, so all of this made a huge impact on me. I learned about technologies, but I also learned some soft skills, like how do you create a sustainable environment for people around you? How do you care for others? Uh, how can you be very simple, funny, yet depart profound knowledge? I am very grateful and indebted to Newcastle University. I owe a lot of my success to what I have learned living so far away from my home into a new home, which I call Newcastle upon time. Uh, during my Newcastle journey, I learned a lot of things. I learned to play violin and I, I had a stage performance in Sage Gates Head. I learned steel pans, uh, some dance forms jive, cha-cha, bajata, and whatnot. I, I also became a good cook. Uh, traveled a lot uh, in UK, Europe. Even after coming back to India, I traveled uh, to on many solo trips. So uh, I was very happy on a great learning curve. But like every interesting story has a twist and a turn, my story had two. So uh, here I was getting a job in London uh, to pursue my dreams. But coming back from a reserved uh, family, I was called back uh, to India uh, while uh, I took an emotional decision out of impulse and without any plan, without any adjustment, without any forecast of what I was going to do. Just being very emotional, I came back to India. And uh, when I landed here, uh, people were not aware about what mechatronics is. Uh, people were not even interested in that. Everybody had their own. A mindset set up. Uh, so I started looking for jobs and the first ever job that I was offered, uh, they told me that, uh, okay, we'll let you in, you will work with us, but uh, you won't be paid for that. Um, there I was standing uh, in such a storm thinking, okay, I've done my master's from mechatronics. I was supposed to be working in London and here I'm getting a job which I'm not even being paid for. Uh, it looked like end of the world, but uh, th that is where my interesting journey started. Uh, so fast forward to right now, currently I am a cloud software developer at IBM, uh, one of the most leading industry in uh, hybrid cloud and artificial intelligence, and hopefully coming up quantum computing. Uh, to non-tech people, this might be sounding like a, Latin, Latin to you, but uh, this is the technology which we are going to see, uh, which is going to be in everyone's household coming so far. It is going to impact uh, continents, all the continents of the planet. Uh, so this is my story so far. Let me go to the lessons that I learned from my personal experience. The first lesson that I learned is to balance yourself. 
uh, you can't be extremely emotional person and you can't be extremely fully planned person there, there has to be a beautiful balance between that uh, you can't be extremely disciplined person or you can't be extremely impromptu person you have to find a balance uh, how do you find a balance just like learning to ride a bicycle uh, you will practice fall and learn practice fall and learn uh, because in life there are many situations some situations you need to be disciplined and some situations you are required to be impromptu uh, sometimes there has to be a complex solution to a problem and sometimes it, it could be very simple uh, i would like to show you a small video uh, regarding that to convey my concept and then i'll continue my story ahead i hope everyone enjoyed this so it, it was so phenomenal right a uh, different type of concepts are required in different scenario so you cannot stick to just one uh, discipline you have to be flexible you have to flow like water uh, another uh, important lesson that i learned from my life is uh, wanting north and walking east for example if you know your destination is north uh, if you know you want to achieve something but if you're going to not do work in that direction you might not land up there so hard work is important but right work is equally important uh, for example for many years in my own career i have been working for service industry and every time i shifted my domain because service industry asks you to change and be impromptu with your technology but at the end of the day i was not rooted into anything i, I didn't have an identity i i was not called an sme a subject matter expert for anything so i decided that i want to be something i want to be rooted that is when i tried i started my training again i trained myself thoroughly for four and a half months on cloud technology and uh, i landed up into this particular role so uh, be sure what you want and start working in that direction next uh, i would like to say is 
when you enter this professional world okay uh, you meet different type of people and you have to know how to deal with difficult kind of people you have to know how to deal with emotional people uh, you have to know how to deal with your managers so uh, your response to different type of people should be a diff- in a different way do not fall into trap of praising people just because they are a level higher than you always remember to create your healthy boundary try to build your happy network building network is really important but building a happy network is also important what is happy network a happy network is a network of mentors or of well wishers who look after you who correct you who give you good feedback a happy network is having friends or colleagues or professional acquaintances who are who wish good for you who are happy when you move ahead in life and at the same time you are happy for them and you want them to move ahead in life so um, always always keep that in mind uh, next i would go to some practical guides to build your career if you want to build your career in it industry in cloud domain uh, there is only one mantra which i can give you is be a very good coder you have to code 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 there is no escape from that no matter you are 15 years experience your 20 years experience you should be very good at coding so uh, one practical way which i can guide you is go to hacker rank i hope people are aware about hacker rank it's a place where you can learn coding it's a place where you can get certified for coding uh, appear for hacker rank challenges once you solve that challenges you can solve it for python java c golan whichever language you love uh, to you would love to participate in once you have that hacker rank uh, challenge you have accomplished that challenge post that challenge to your linkedin uh, in your linkedin profile mark it that you have passed this hacker rank challenge because uh, right now i am interviewing ibm is very heavily interviewing people and we are looking forward to uh, make many recruits and the major requirement for us is coding even if you are great at all your concepts Uh, theoretical concepts if you can't solve the code in give, given amount of time uh, you won't be selected so uh, my i'm giving a lot of emphasis on uh, giving hacker rank code and putting it on your linkedin account uh, next what i would say is grow your network a very good way to grow your network is a uh, platform is linkedin of course like nitin mentioned that you can always be impromptu and approach people outside uh, it could be a cold call or something like that definitely that's a great approach so again you can take a, a balance between having an impromptu approach or to other people attending many conferences meetups and you can also have a systematic plan in place via linkedin so when you approach someone on linkedin always think in mind what you can give what you can take will come as a second step uh, for example now if you want to approach some of the panelists here you could always say hi i was there at the newcastle university your learning uh, your newcastle event i heard about your speech so and always be genuine don't don't praise for no reason you could you could be very attentive when you can say that okay you mentioned about mentors and that topic was very relatable to my heart could you elaborate on that something like that so you listen to the speakers you listen to the people and then when you are approaching them you tell them okay these are the qualities in you which i observed and i vibe with it i resonate with it and it's so amazing this is good with people you know or people you have approached from conferences now if you want to approach someone who is not whom you have never met before for example there is an hr from some uh, very high end company like google amazon ibm uh, you could always approach them and say that i really love this role in your firm i have applied for this role uh, could you guide me if there are some better ways to apply for it so do not directly ask for a job okay hi hello i am here give me a job uh, build your story build your genuinity uh, show what you have so always focus on giving and uh, what taking as a consequence will come and follow you uh, another thing i want to say is be relevant to the market uh for example if if i have to say that when i started my journey i was into embedded system domains 
so i used to work for cars i used to work for solar inverters and right now i am in a very different domain that is cloud uh, i ha- you have to be relevant to the market uh, the reason being uh, majority of the companies are investing heavily into that so you will easily flow with the tide of course if you have your passion if you are passionate about something and you deeply believe into it there is nothing better than following that following your heart or following your passion uh, i i would never go against that at all at all uh, next thing i want to say is uh, make your financial planning the earlier you start the better it is you should be uh, in engineering school it is not really taught about financial planning but it is a very important life lesson the earlier you are financially literate the better it is uh, there's a concept called as compounding in finances which uh, eventually makes you land up with more money just by investing uh, probably we can take this sometime offline but i really wanted to make it a mention uh, to this and uh, even when you talk to your friends i i believe uh, you can mention these points to them and the last point uh, which i want to mention over here is your journey in life should not be to be like him or her someone it should be more about al- unveiling your true self finding out your true self uh, be yourself uh, so there's one um, video which i want to share about that and i would conclude with a surprise Awesome, awesome. That's amazing uh, selection of videos, Daniti. A lot of hidden messages and very, very important messages, especially for uh, young graduates who are just coming out of the university. There's so much for them to learn. And you broke down your your journey throughout uh, your university graduation until today. It has been really, really phenomenal. So amazing. Thank you so much, Niti, for your amazing inputs and insights. Uh, I'd just like to add, uh, ask a, a quick question to you, if you don't mind. Uh, so you said about, uh, you know, you, you you landed a job uh, in India, and but you 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 went through an emotional turmoil since you wanted to do a job in London, and this job is something that's not paying you as much as it, it should have been. 
So how did you manage that transition from, you know, letting those things go and then moving forward and making things positive for yourself? So how was that journey for you? So uh, a failure is not opposite from success. Okay, failure is a stepping stone to success. and growth is often uncomfortable so when i was going through that it was excruciating it was painful and uh, but i kept holding on i kept updating myself one thing which really helped me is uh, i had a feedback loop with me i used to always check okay where i want to go where i am and what is missing in the middle so i used to always keep on understanding that uh, on the top of that i took a lot of Uh, self therapy you need to have a very good self talking technique you need to learn that uh, that helped me i was lucky enough to find very good mentors who who some were strict some broke my heart but that became lesson and some were very good and soft and uh, showed me the way so uh, what i would say is trust the process one and second uh, keep having a feedback loop for yourself to up- update yourself awesome awesome yeah. that's really great uh, really great really thank great thank you uh, so thank you so much neeti um, amazing insight i think i can see the passion in all the panelists here uh, and i think that's that's what binds us together all the new castle graduates that we have the passion for what we do and we also have the same affinity for the university uh, and our alma mater and it has helped us shape our career and our lives uh, till today so so amazing amazing insights and all all the panelists have done amazing so far Uh, and i'm going to open the panel up for the question and answer session here uh, the uh, first question uh, is something to do with uh, the master's degree validity in india so the question here is are master's degree from the uk valid in india uh, and it's open to the panelists uh, probably neeti if you want to jump in yes uh, i also wanted to make an announcement and i think this question completely aligns with that Uh, IBM currently is looking for very good programmers. If anybody uh, wants to join IBM as a programmer, as a cloud developer, please approach me. Uh, I think uh, uh, you have my LinkedIn account access and my first uh, office email ID. You can always approach to me. Uh, and to answer your question, of course, uh, Newcastle University degree is appreciated in India because it's it's. Uh, what you learn is state of the art technology mm. but not just that you also showcase that you have lot of soft skills living in a, another country all by yourself so that demonstrates a lot and i would let other panelists uh, speak as well yes uh, okay uh, is uh, viraj available here sorry viraj could you throw some light on the question is the uk degree valid in india i think uh, definitely uh, yes uh, i have some friends who came back and they are like uh, working in companies like honeywell and 3m uh, into sales and marketing jobs only and i think uh, what uh, makes them uh, stand apart from the people here definitely apart from skills and all is that they have a background with they have an understanding of dealing with different people from different demographics so i think definitely that's a, uh, that's an advantage and that's a very big opportunity for people graduating and coming back into india for jobs awesome uh thank you thank you viraj uh, unfortunately nitin had to leave because of his ill health uh, but we we'll, we wish him well uh, but uh, yeah. maybe achint would want to throw in some uh, light on this question here sure uh so in terms of um, the the one year masters you in terms of working in the private industry in india there is no issues we've got alumni from Newcastle and from different universities within the UK that are working in various different sectors. I think one of the participants just asked a question about the R and D uh, sector within India, and I do uh, know for a fact that there are um, Indian students who studied in the UK, uh, even at Newcastle, who yeah. are working in the pharma sector uh, or the biotechnology sector in India uh, in research, uh, and they have finished their masters. That's that's not an issue. The currently the only Uh, the reason why this uh, there's a bit of a you know uh, ambiguity around this is yeah. that the Indian government doesn't recognize a one year master so if you did come back to do a government job uh, that's where there might be an issue however if you've done your bachelor's uh, through an indian university um, yeah. it's usually all right because most of the government jobs would ask you to have a bachelor's degree um 
However, with the new education policy that's coming in, um, there is a pathway to recognize a one-year master's, which they're planning to introduce in India too. Um, so hopefully things get better as we go along, even right. for the public sector. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, we have Preeti Bansal here as well from Newcastle University. She's working with Newcastle, based in India, Delhi. Preeti, can you help us uh, clear this cloud of whether the, the degree is valid in India or not, the UK degree? You're, un you're, you're muted, Preeti. Sorry, sorry. Thank you, Webhav, and uh, you know, thank you for asking this question. And I think this is a very important question. Uh, you know, when when I counsel students, when even they are starting their journey to Newcastle, you know, yeah. I'm asked this question, and most of the time, because we know for the fact that one-year degrees have got some issues with recognition when it comes to the government sector, as my colleague Achint just talked. So, just want to say one thing on that. Um, this is to do with AIU, which is Association of Indian Universities policies, where it is nothing to do with UK degrees. It is just to do with one-year masters. So if it is a one-year master in some other country, that would also not be recognized. Um, so it's not UK number one. So I think I really need to clear this myth. Uh, it's about the duration. Now, coming on to the second point there, uh, a good news is with the new education policy, AIU is seriously considering and reconsidering the one-year masters, considering the bilateral talks we have, you know, uh, between India and the UK and the way we want to collaborate on high-end researches. So this doesn't go really well, where at one point in time, we are talking about those researches and collaborations, and at the other side, we are not recognizing one-year masters from the UK. So that exercise has already started taking place. Uh, and uh, we are very hopeful very soon, you know, there would be an announcement. Now, having said that, as you, you've mentioned, all of you, the degrees are very well recognized by the corporates, by the private sectors. And, you know, uh, you know I'm, I'm continuously suing, seeing my valuable alumni is you know, doing really well in India when they come back. So this is something which is a fact. Um, uh, but yes, one point that I want to say, and then I'll end, is that if you are looking at pursuing your PhD, you know, when you want to come back to India, and if you're looking at particularly a government university, then please check with them. I think that's where uh, you find yourself a bit stuck up. Or if you're looking at doing a government job, which in most of the cases, students are looking at a global experience and not a government job. So yes, definitely. I will very clearly say this will have no issues, you know, when you're looking at coming back to India. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Preeti, for such a detailed and broad insight uh, about this question. I think it has cleared a lot of myth about the validity of the degree uh, of uh, UK degrees in India. So thank you. Thank you so much, Preeti, for joining us uh, for such an amazing insight. Uh, Thanks, so, so moving on to the next question to the panelists. Uh, uh, so what are the top companies that uh, in your sector, mostly, that one should apply? Uh, any, any top companies that you would want to recommend where people could target for finding jobs in India? Can we have uh, Achint? Can we have Achint to open the question, please? Uh, yeah, sure. So across the board, there are, uh, I've uh, personally uh, never really applied for a job uh, after having come back to India, but I know uh, of students and you know my course mates or my friends at university who work for some of the biggest companies in India, whether it's Amazon, uh, Reliance, um, IBM, like Nidhi's currently working there. Um, Flipkart is another one where uh, UK graduates work, whether you're looking at, <clears throat> if you're looking at the media side of it, Quint uh, has a couple of Indian graduates uh, from right. Newcastle who work at Quint. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty much across the board, there are a number of different companies that would be looking at uh, graduates from abroad. And, you know, the fact that you're from the UK and from the Russell Cook University definitely adds uh, to that uh, kind of uh, prestige when they're looking for you <clears throat> as, a, as a potential employee. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Achint. Uh, Neeti, uh, which top <coughs> companies would you recommend people to apply in your sector, in the IT sector? Um, in the IT sector, it is called as FAN. Uh, that's uh, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, uh, IBM. Uh, but I have, again, I, I'm repeating myself, but uh, 
I would highly recommend uh, to have a good coding skill. Uh, update your resume on a website called snoki.com. Update your LinkedIn and uh, provide evidence of your uh, coding. And uh, you can also do some MNM like blog writing or uh, uh, writing to open source community, which will make them interested in you. That's the whole agenda. Right. Right. Excellent. Thank you, Niti. Uh, Viraj, any comments from your end? I think uh, similar to Achan that I haven't applied uh, to any company after coming back, but yeah. definitely because of the marketing field, I think any company, every every company requires sales and marketing. So I think any top company, or I would suggest like people coming back to first uh, work uh, in a smaller company because there you actually get to learn a lot. Because in a bigger uh, organization, you tend to like get overshadowed by the big fishes. So I think uh, if you start from a smaller company and then keep building up, I think the end goal must be Amazon or Apple. I think that's the way to go. Right. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Viraj. Uh, I'm just going to take one last question because we are running a little short of time here. And obviously, uh, my colleague Jeremy here has shared an email address. If you have any more questions specific to living in India and working in India, you can email uh, to the uh, uh, on the email address given in the chat box uh, and we can help you answer those questions for you. But one, one last question for the panelists here is uh, what resources at the university did you use to strengthen your job opportunities post-graduation? So can we have uh, Viraj? Viraj, can you throw some light on this? What resources did you use at the university? Uh, I think definitely first the career services at uh, the university. Yeah. I think that was the starting step for me. And uh, apart from that, because I hadn't applied for a, a full-time job, I was actually applying for uh, part-time jobs, as I mentioned, in the second and the final year. So I think it was more like when I went to the career services, they mentioned about that uh, you can be a brand ambassador and then probably applying for phone call interviews and then uh, a one-on-one -on -one interview. So I think it was, I think, I think the most important personally for me, if I have to speak, I think is the career services. And then LinkedIn. I mean, LinkedIn is uh, one thing that people are now getting into it in the last three to four years. But in 2012 itself, in the UK, it was like very prominent. So I think that's the most important thing that every aspirant should uh, like get right. a good hold on LinkedIn. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Viraj. Niti, uh, what, is, uh, what are the resources that you, you, you use at the university to strengthen your job opportunities? Uh, one thing was career services, definitely, uh, yeah. as Viraj mentioned. There was also something called as angellist.com. Uh, there were a lot of uh, companies uh, actively looking for candidates over there. So my first job offer was, uh, I was being approached by the company. I did not go out to look after it. So probably uh, uh, there are many multiple uh, websites where you can keep yourself updated. Okay. Awesome. Great. Uh, Achint? Uh, yeah, just to add on from uh, what uh, Niti and uh, Viraj mentioned, of course, the career service, I think, is uh, a prime example uh, of where uh, a lot of resources lie for students to, you know, take advantage of. Uh, and not just uh, students who are at university, but also graduates uh, can use uh, the services, um, I think, up to three years after they've graduated. Uh, so that's, uh, again, quite great. Uh, but apart from that, I think um, just... You know, um, well, I'm going to go back to uh, the same networking aspect of it. Uh, but your professors are quite important. Um, they've got some really, really great links within industry, uh, especially if you're doing technical courses. Um, you know, and that's a great way to look at uh, trying to apply for jobs. Uh, Niti mentioned a professor who was talking about a number of trains. I've, uh, I think I know the exact professors he was talking about. And he was uh, quite uh, helpful for me um, when I, you know, was applying for my master's or even in, you know, looking for jobs around um, the UK, a friend of mine uh, ended up getting a job at Jaguar through him. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's a lot that happens that way. Uh, and it's just about approaching, <clears throat> you know, uh, different people within the university. The Students Union is again, a great uh, place, you know, to kind of look at options. A lot of societies within the union uh, are <clears throat> funded by some really big businesses. So for example, uh, the debating society at one point at least was uh, funded by Accenture. Yeah. And uh, I know a couple of students who were, um, who ended up, you know, doing a course in finance and ended up getting a job at Accenture because of the connections they made through that. So there's various different ways, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. The sky is the limit, basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
thank you, Achit, uh, Achint, and uh, thank you to all the panelists for answering all the questions and giving detailed insights about how their life has been since they graduated and how they want to uh, shape their career in the future and give pointers to the recent young graduates as well. Uh, so thank you all the panelists, first of all, and thank you to all the attendees. You could be doing something else uh, in the lockdown. You could be watching Netflix or doing something else, but you chose to be here and you gave your time to us. And we thank you for, uh, for you guys to, you know, uh, for attending the event today. And we are really, really thankful to the Newcastle New City team as well uh, for allowing us to, uh, you know, to share our thoughts and uh, be able to talk about our experiences uh, since the graduation from Newcastle University. We have a quick poll coming up here. And if you don't mind, could you all please uh, put in your, your, your feedback in the poll, please. So over to you, you Rebecca. Thank you so much.